Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Mike Filiber, Senior Pastor here at Heritage Presbyterian Church. Yes, I am. I'm at Heritage Presbyterian Church and not on my back patio this week. Woohoo! That's so exciting. Anyways, here for morning prayer. And I just wanted to point out um, our deacons and elders starting in January will be reading this book together. I highly recommend this. I reviewed this a few months back by J. Todd Billings, The End of the Christian Life. And I just see a box sitting over there with all the books. And I'll have some extra copies here at the church building over on the book table in the, um, in the small fellowship hall for the near future. Well, we're here for morning prayer. I want to say happy birthday to some folks. I want to say happy birthday to Karan Bishop up in Connecticut. Happy birthday! And Colton Wilson down in Norman, Oklahoma. Hey, I like the fact that my beard's longer than your beard. Abby Betts, happy birthday, and Dale Stasny in Midland, Texas. Good friend of mine. Dale, happy birthday. I'm going to pray for all of you all when we get done with the catechism and when we get done with Bible reading this morning. So we're reading through the Heidelberg Catechism, and we're the part of the catechism dealing with the Lord's Supper. And I'm just going to read one question today. Uh, it's question 80. <clears throat> what difference is there between the Lord's Supper and the Popish Mass. Popish means the Roman Catholic Mass. The Lord's Supper testifies to us that we have full forgiveness of all our sins by the one sacrifice of Jesus Christ, which he himself has once accomplished on the cross, and that by the Holy Ghost we are engrafted into Christ, who hath his true body, uh, who with his true body is now in heaven and at the right hand of the Father, and is to be there worshipped. But the Mass teaches that the living and the dead have not forgiveness of sins through the sufferings of Christ unless Christ is still daily offered for them by the priests, and that the Christ is bodily under the form of bread and wine and is therefore to be worshipped in them. And thus the Mass at the bottom is nothing else but a denial of the one sacrifice and passion of Jesus Christ and an accursed idolatry. Very strong words, but as you remember the history of the Reformation, you will remember why that was an important statement back in the 16th century. That was the Heidelberg Catechism. And today we are just we're working our way through Malachi. Malachi is a great prophet to read during Advent season. And we are at Malachi chapter 3. I'm going to read verse 6 again, but from verse 6 through verse 12. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Will, ma will man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In your tithes and contributions. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me and the whole nation of you. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to, to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need, I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil, and your vine and the fields shall not fail to bear, to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. That was Malachi chapter 3, 6 through 12. Again, notice how it begins, just the unchangeableness of God, and that is our hope because that's where grace is. The God of steadfast love is unchangeable. Yes, he's a God of justice as well, and that too is unchangeable. But his steadfast love and his justice, it's not a mean and devouring God. And so he says to them, return to me, and I will return to you. Very much what James says, submit to God, resist the devil, he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The hope is there. Oh, it's an exciting passage. That was Malachi 3, 6 through 12. We'll pick up from there next uh, tomorrow. Until then, let's pray. Lord God, we come to you, are grateful that you are God who does not change. And because of that, we have hope of your steadfast love and grace and mercy. And you've opened the door. Return to me, and I'll return to you. Oh, Lord, may we always have our faces to you and not our backs. May we always turn to you and never away from you. Lord, we pray for those who are having birthdays today. We pray for Karan, we pray for Colton, for Abby, and for Dale. 
Lord, thank you for this day of celebration. May they rejoice in this day and remember the good gifts that you have blessed them with and that this coming year would be a full year for them of great joy and peace and prosperity. We pray, Lord God, that they would be in good health as it goes well with their soul, that they would rejoice, that they would walk in the truth and, and flourish in your light, Lord. We pray that you would bless and enrich them. Lord God, we pray for um, the healing and comfort um, of Fulashika's mother in Sri Lanka, who has recently lost her baby. We ask you, Lord, that you would be with her and uh, console her aching heart, Lord, and lift, her, lift up her face to look up into your smiling face. And Lord, we pray for um, uh, Presbyterian churches in America, PCA churches of Oklahoma. Um, there are many here, Lord, that have been established, some that are being planted. I think of uh, Shawnee Presbyterian Church and uh, King's Cross Presbyterian Church, and there are others, Lord. We pray that your these congregations would thrive and grow and and be strengthened, that uh, they would be um, societies, sacred societies of deep fellowship around the word, the sacraments, and in prayer. Lord, we pray for Ben and Janet, Matt and Kathleen, and Edward. We ask you, Lord, that you would fortify them day by day, that you would grant them to remain in good health. We ask you, Lord, that you would take care of their, uh, their needs, their financial and emotional, relational needs. But most of all, we pray that they would grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord, we pray for an, uh, an, um, a U.S. Navy chaplain, Danny Cho, Lieutenant Danny Cho. Uh, we ask you to be with him and his wife, uh, Ji Yong, and Emma, and Ethan. Uh, Lord, we ask you that you would grant them, Lord, to flourish and grow. Uh, we ask you to strengthen them and fortify them, keep them in good health. We pray that you would bless the work that uh, Danny is doing there at the uh, U.S. Navy Recruiting Training Command, Lord, in the Great Lakes, Illinois, that you would uh, open doors for him. You would help him to lead in a way that uh, shows the grace and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Watch over him, Lord, and fill him with good things. O oh God, most holy, wise, and powerful preserver and governor of all your creatures and all of our actions, O oh, keep us this day and throughout this week in health of body and soundness of mind in purity of heart, and cheerfulness of spirit, and contentment with our lot, and charity with our neighbor, and further all of our lawful undertakings with your blessing. In our labor, strengthen us. In our pleasure, purify us. In our difficulties, direct us. In our perils, defend us. In our troubles, comfort us. And supply all of our needs according to the riches of your grace in Christ Jesus. And finally, Lord, we pray for those in our church and our families that we know who are dealing with COVID. Um, some are having a hard time, others are recovering nicely. Lord, we would ask you that you would grant us, uh, grant them, Lord, to fully recover and bounce back and be in greater health, but also that they would spend the remainder of their days even more delighted in you and cherishing and relish, uh, cherishing you and relishing you. Lord, thank you for our time of prayer. Bless us this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there you are, friends. That was morning prayer for Monday, the 14th of December. 14 December. It's halfway through the month almost. Christmas is just around the corner. Well, there you go. I'll be back tomorrow and pick up with the catechism, and we'll pick up in Malachi where we left off and just continue on through. Until then, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.